Alright, I don't know how much video I captured, so I'm going to take the belt off, motor mount, I'm going to unhook the power steering here and here. This wiring will all come un unplugged. This should have been on the timing chain cover. And that's going to go around, unhook all that, and then we'll throw it over in the battery compartment. But to unhook the exhaust where it hooks onto the cat on both sides. Of course the throttle cable. We'll unhook that. Vacuum line for the brakes. And then there's a couple plugs here. Okay. I think I am going to take the starter out and I guess a better shot of those vacuum lines for the brakes and a couple plugs back there, I think right there, a good shot of that throttle cable and then there's a plug on the bottom of the Throttle body right there. I can probably just unbolt that, unbolt this bracket. And then there's a bracket up top. Okay, I can do that too. All right, I think that's everything. All right, here we go. Okay, so here's that first one I took off. This end here goes to that, that, and then the other end, that end, goes right to this intake runner here. Okay, pull that off. So that should be, there's just three vacuum lines. One, two, and three. Three. Okay, you can see that long one. I don't know. Long one goes there. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's not going to win any fabrication awards, but I got my lifting eye. Just attach it to the throttle body there. And it's about the same thickness, same thickness as the uh, factory lifting eye on the other side. So hopefully that'll work. It should. Should be plenty strong. This motor can't be that heavy. Yeah, that should work. I'm thinking put a couple of shackles on there and a chain, and we're almost ready. I win. All right, we got it out. It was difficult. Let me take a quick video of the inside here. See, it looks like this has a junkyard transmission in it. You can see the torque converter. Alright, so I think I'm going to replace the, the two heater hoses while we're in here. And I think I'm going to take that axle shaft out. It looks like it started to come out anyway. See, it's leaking oil there. 
I think I should have taken that out because this power steering pump is going to be extremely difficult to get back in. But if I take that axle shaft out, I'll have all that room there. It's much easier. So, yeah. So, a few things about pulling these out. You can see what I took off. I took the alternator off. Crankshaft pulley. I did leave the water pump pulley on. You could probably take that off because it's everything's so tight that it'll kind of hang up on the bolts but I did get it out um, of course the oil pump is over on this side or would have been right there a lot of wiring this is the firewall side of the engine I get this thing to turn probably won't stay anyway alternator goes on right there or I'm sorry that's the air conditioner which I just I've got mine just hanging there I got some wire you can kind of see it down there wire and a strap going up like that just so it's not hanging on the hoses and that's a good spot for it it's out of the way um, I left that heater hose uh, I'm sorry radiator Hose. I guess it's just laying there now. Okay, I think that's everything for now. Got to get on the engine stand. Okay, so I had one little kind of dilemma here. We had this the 2.5 on the engine stand, and originally we were in a hole here, and I think that's it. Yeah, we just had three three bolt holes and then I took the oil pan off and I realized that to, to get the crank out you got to take this whole casting off down to well down to here so you can't use that bolt hole so that was a real problem so I moved this down here but unfortunately because you don't have anything up high, the engine block leaned way forward. So I ended up taking, I had to take the throttle body off and I just stuck a 2x4 in there on the mounting plate. And that's what I had to do. Um, I wanted the engine, you know, completely upside down, but I'm going to have to just work on it at an angle, which is not bad, really. It's going to be just fine. But yeah, these rods are not looking good. Quite a bit of slop there. I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, they're pretty, pretty loose. That one's tight. There's a couple in here. That's the worst. Anyway, so that's where we're at. Have not seen a whole lot of metal particles. Um, yeah, you know, the engine might be a little bit, I don't know, it's not too bad. Maybe a little more sludge build up, but I think they kept kept after the uh, oil changes, so it's not too bad. I think it'll be repairable. All right. Okay, I'm getting ready to take the timing belt off. Yeah. I got it on top dead center number one crankshaft pulley I think this is the right cam see that mark and the left cam uh, where is it somewhere down there okay here we go <coughs> yeah so I'm um, Getting ready to, uh, well, I want to take the crank out, or at least get in and uh, look at the bearings. Got to take this uh, rear uh, upper oil pan, whatever they call this, casting off. Anyway, uh, I have this book, and it's a uh, Haynes. 
This is a horrible manual. I'm just having a really tough time with it. The pictures are horrible. And uh, here's, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is, they tell you how to get the bolts out. Okay, and you know, I was looking at, say you've got bolt one, two, and then three and four. Okay, fine, five, six. And then I started looking at my engine and I realized I got a lot more bolts. So this is like one, two, and then I've got the three and four. Okay, we're fine, it's fine. And then they kind of come over here and they start working on this one and this one. They don't show that this one when you take that out or that one or, or that one. And when you look at the picture, they've already got them out. Like that one right there. And there's another one I think here covered by the bubble. There's one right there. Gone. 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 I can't. And there's one underneath here. Gone. One under here, gone. And they don't show anywhere in the book where you take those out, what order they come out. So I kind of just had to ad lib. Had a lot of problems with their uh, timing, timing chain marks. The pictures were just horrible for trying to find uh, the timing chain marks. I'll see if I can find that. Okay, so here's the section on the timing chain. This one, timing belt. This one's not too bad, except on this pulley, they could have got a better angle. The pulley has a, a V notch in it. They don't show that. Um, but the worst one, worst two, is uh, one of the camshafts. You know, they just kind of say, yeah, there's a mark here, and you line that up. They could have got a much better picture. So then the other one, um, so that's one of the camshafts. I'm going to find the other one. Hmm, I just saw it. I lost it. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, this one. Look at this beautiful. Let's see. I got a camera in the right place. Yeah, see? here's What a great angle. They must have done this in the car, you know. Just Here's the mark and yeah there's something over in this general area so let's look at where it really is on the engine what it's supposed to look like you know maybe I should have taken the pictures well I've got the I've got the uh, pulley off so you can't really see that one you can just see the white mark um, let me get my light set up here if I can okay Well, okay, I'll get that in there somehow. There you go. See how I painted that white down there? There's a, there's actually a mark there, and that's that's where that's supposed to line up on that cam. And then down here, there's a great big marker. I'll touch it here, right there. See, I painted the whole thing white, and I got my yellow mark going right to that. I don't know why they couldn't have got a better picture of that. You know, they should have should have done it with the engine out, not try to do it in the car. This book just sucks. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to get this crankshaft out and take a look at it. <laughs> okay, just a quick uh, note here. Taking the main cap bolts out. There's two different lengths and sizes. The big fat long ones you got a bigger hole the inner ones are going to all be the big diameter the longer and the smaller skinny ones shorter ones are on the outside and the reason being is when you I don't know if you can see down in there probably hard to see but um, on the outer the outer portion there there's not a lot of meat down on the block so they had to run a smaller bolt whereas the inner one you got lots of material to go into so they just threw a small extra bolt there so I, I don't know I don't totally understand this but they got two you know two bolts per cap one two three four caps seems pretty solid to me a lot of bolts <clears throat> 
<clears throat> okay, so I got the top of the main caps off, and get the light set up here. And you know, I didn't think these bearings looked too horrible. The uh, side clearance on the crank seemed really good, really tight, end play, whatever you call it. You know, yeah, they got some wear, but. I didn't think they looked too bad. However, when I looked at the crankshaft, not so good. So I don't know if this is going to be salvageable or not. Those journals are heavily scored. I mean, I don't know if you can see it. it might be too much light. Just really rough bearing surf or, uh, journals super rough doesn't look like it got hot or anything but man so I'm gonna have to you know I'm gonna pull this out take it to a machine shop and see if it's serviceable if they can take out you know ten thousands or whatever and go with oversized bearings but yeah it's funny because I thought the rod bearing, I took a couple caps off, I thought the rod journals looked pretty good. The bearings are shot in the rods. They just, um, they're real loose. They just fell right out of the caps. I took these end two out. Maybe I'll go ahead and pull, the, pull one off. Hold on a second. Back off and... Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's it's a little bit rough, but not not as bad as the main bearing. I mean, you can kind of compare. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but that's that's pretty heavily scored. And that's not the worst one. Getting kind of a glare there. Um, I think the worst one is probably this the end one, but. Uh, yeah, anyway, here's the rod bearing out of the cap. Let's see if I can get it in there. Get it in there. There's too much light. Let's see, get a good shot of that. I mean, you know, it's really reflecting off there. Okay, maybe that's better over here. A little bit darker. Okay. Focus on that. Yeah, I mean it's you know it's got wear, but the thing about this bearing is it just kind of fell out of there. It wasn't tight in the cap at all, so that's that's not good. And the little um, the little notch there doesn't it just barely hooks into the cap. So yeah, we've got some issues here like I say I don't I think I'm done for today tonight probably this week I'll pull this crank out take out you know take all the caps off pull the crank out and take it to a shop and just see what the verdict is may have to buy a new crank but I'm hoping that we can salvage this one all right that's where we're at I got the crankshaft back from the machine shop for the 2.5626. Looks like they took 10 thousandths off the rods and 10 thousandths off the mains. So, had a lot of prep work to do on the block. Getting everything cleaned up, getting ready to put the bearings in and uh, recheck the oil clearances. Alrighty. Okay, I got the plastic gauge down, one thousandths to three thousandths on the main journals. We're getting ready to put the main caps casting on there and check our oil clearances. Okay, I'm getting ready to tighten up the perimeter bolts on this 2.5 V6. So the book shows. Um, the loosening sequence 
they say to start here one two I've got these marked out all the way up to it just goes up to eight and this is something I complained about the book doesn't show like this bolt that bolt that bolt what order so I kind of just had to make up my own sequence so it looks like they only showed the ones that are on the mains okay and then there's one there and one down there so what I did is I torqued I went to 15 pounds I started at 8 worked my way backwards 7 6 5 um, 4 3 and then 2 and 1 and then I went back to the highest number I have which is 14 in center 14 and I call that 13 12 11 10 9 so that's how I did it they don't show in the book so I torqued all the perimeter bolts all the main caps are torqued so now I'm going to pull this thing back apart hopefully the plastic gauge will give me the numbers I want to see alrighty Okay, I'm getting to do the getting ready to do the final torque on the main caps up lower casting whatever they call this thing and uh, the Haynes manual is as I've mentioned is not the greatest but you've got several different torque um, poundages these larger bolts go uh, these are the B bolts they call them these go 19 pounds plus 70 degrees past 19 these here are 15 pounds and they go 60 degrees and then these last bolts with the number four that goes on the number four main cap in the back and these go 19 and I believe it's 80 degrees and I was you know I've had this thing off and on about four or five times now and it took me a while to realize they don't tell you this in the book so I want to show this I've got one of these marked this one so they put these nice little hash marks I put these put white paint on there and then you'll notice that I've got a black sharpie mark so this is torqued this bolt here is torqued I've got the white and the black kind of like a timing mark so all I have to do now is turn this white mark clockwise you know tighten it it gets to that point and that's your degrees so the reason why they say make sure you put these number four bolts in here because these have a 80 degree spread you can see those marks and this one here is a 70 degree spread so they are different that's the only difference the length and everything is the same anyway kind of interesting I wish they would have mentioned that in the man in the book repair book but I just figured that out after looking at it going what are those marks for and then it dawned on me that I started looking at they had different angles I thought oh okay so maybe this is common knowledge to Ford and Mazda people but I'm new to this game so that's the little tech tip of the day okay I got everything torqued you can see uh, you can see how that white mark this is the original one was here it's not focusing but anyway you can see it it lines up with that one uh, one last thing I was going to mention on this is there's going to be places where you can't get in and mark with a sharpie um, so what I find is like on this one it'll be hard to see but what I did is is if you can find a pointy tool pointer and just kind of put it where your mark would be and then with the other arm just torque it and just try to hold your pointer in the correct position or if you can find some kind of a landmark you know on the block and say okay it's got to go right to that little corner that'll work too anyway now I just got to put in the perimeter bolts and the book isn't real super clear on um, on 
tightening these down. I think I mentioned this earlier in the video. I've got my numbering system, and this is this is the order you you um, disassemble it. So I'm going to start in reverse order, but I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to go uh, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, whatever, down to one. And what that does is I'm going to get all the mains done. When I get done, I'll have all these mains done. And then I'll go back and do the, um, I'll start with probably uh, 14 and work backwards on these, the ones that are like in between the mains. But like I say, the book doesn't really explain this, so that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, another night crawler tech tip concerning these uh, back two bolts on the oil pan. So, if you happen to be tearing one of these motors down, doing a rebuild, or like I'm doing, rebuilding the bottom end, when you uh, when you put this bottom section in and you put your perimeter bolts in and torque them. would suggest these these back two oil pan bolts are very long they go all the way down into the engine block okay and I didn't think about this when I put it together so when you put this section on you see the silicone so so what happened was when I go to put these in the holes are plugged in the block because of all the silicone so I would recommend when you put this piece on, take those long bolts and just thread them in and just hand tight and just let it sit there so that when you're ready to put your pan on, you just pull these out and the hole is going to be clear. So there's my, my tech tip for today on the 2.5 liter Mazda V6. Okay, we're getting ready to put the KL back in the 626. Did some final cleanup. Um, so I did a few things. I just made a note on here to remind myself. Anyway, installed a new Denso Bank One Sensor One O2 sensor. The original one worked fine, but this is the um, This is the firewall side, so I don't want to have to do this down the road. You know, it's hard to get in there, really tight. Not impossible, but I figured I'd do it now. Uh, put new plugs in it. Uh, we got those all gapped. Um, I replaced this fuel line. It's kind of a little crossover line on the fuel rails. Just figured what the heck, might as well do that. Um, had to replace a line here. I damaged this line trying to get it off this um, engine stand. It got tore up. This is not the exact right size. They didn't have what I needed, so it's a little bigger than stock. Anyway, the more I learn about this engine, it's kind of cool. Um, these Mazda 2.5s have a um, it's like they have two intake manifolds in one. And you know, you've got this divider here. I'm not totally sure how all this works. There's some valving, but you've got two intake runners. So usually with an engine, if you have a long runner, it gives you good top end power, and a short runner gives you a better low end torque. So this engine has both. It has two paths. So the path on the right here is the long runner and then this is the short runner you know it goes right in I can't, it's hard to get a shot of that anyway and then it's got some valving here I'm not exactly sure how it works but you know one valve here vacuum controlled and another valve here and it's got this little crossover pipe here and it's all computer controlled and I noticed that this car really has real smooth acceleration and I guess that's because you know there's no dead spots it's just 
uh, the way that manifold is, they didn't have to compromise top end and low end power. It's just nice and smooth all the way up. And these things will rev pretty high. We're not going to be revving this one very high, but um, short, you know, real short stroke motor. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of cool. All right, so now I got to put the, uh, got to get it off the engine stand on the um, hoist, and I got to put the um, rear main seal in and the uh, flex plate, and then we're ready to drop it in. Oh. Yeah, one other thing. Uh, we also had my son, this is his car, had him replace the two uh, heater hoses in the back there because those are also difficult to get to. And I had to replace one power steering hose that kind of got damaged when I took the engine out. I had to cut the old one off. So I just got a, a real long one here and I'll just cut it to length. I got it hooked up. It goes down there on a um, on a tube, looks like it goes right to the power steering, uh, rack and pinion steering system. And, uh, oh, I replaced the, uh, the seal, front transmission seal, so behind that torque converter. Like I say, this, this tranny's been replaced. And I bought new torque converter nuts for the flex plate and we got NICs on there, NICs around the pilot there. And uh, I was going to take out that intermediate shaft, but that ended up being a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. If it was easy, I would have done it. But um, yeah, I'm just going to have to work around it. And my big worry is getting this power steering back on. This was kind of tough to get to that's why I want to take that shaft out but I'm just gonna to have to deal with it um, yeah I also bought um, new radiator hoses upper and lower which will put be putting those on at the end so oh another thing I bought is I bought a you can go on eBay this car I don't know where oh right here was missing the, I don't know where the shifter cable is, right here. It's missing the the guts, I guess, to the, this thing was just sitting on the transmission on here. Luckily it never came off, but I bought a bushing. You can get these on eBay repair kit. So we'll be putting that in. So hopefully um, won't have any issues. I also have somewhere around here bought a fuel filter and I got an air filter coming tomorrow. So I pretty much tried to replace everything that I could think of and we're just going to start getting the motor back in today. Today's Sunday. Alright, wish me luck. Okay, we got the 2.5 in there started. I got some of the bolts started. I don't know if they're in the right places, but we got got everything pretty well bolted up, I guess. I got one of the flex plate nuts on. One of the four and then uh, yeah. Just getting started on putting this thing in, so so far so good. Man, this thing is a tight fit. Wow. It may not look like it now that it's down, I don't have a good light, but yeah, you know, you might look in there and say, wow, all kinds of clearance, but when you're putting this thing in, that water pump shaft is sliding all the way down. Another point, you see this air conditioning line? This part of the manifold right here, I mean, it rubs right on that. It doesn't really hurt it but it's so tight going in there it's just amazing this thing here is going to rub on the timing cover because you know the whole engine has to be forward to clear the flex plate 
So to clear the flex plate, you're clear out, clear out here on that water pump shaft. So yeah, it looks like a lot of room, a lot of clearance once you got it in, but, and I had the, I don't know what I was thinking. I had the crankshaft pulley on there, but I took that back off because I knew that stuck out too far. So pretty much there's no pulleys on here. Everything's off. All right. Okay, we got the 2.5, got the motor bolted in, front motor mount is on. Next thing I'm going to do is attack the uh, power steering pump, looking forward to that. I was reading the book though, it says to take off the uh, passenger side wheel, I'm going to try that. Try going in that way. I don't know if that's going to help, but we'll try it. Um, one thing I don't know if I ever mentioned, when you go to pull these out or put them in, mainly pull them out, there's one bolt that's kind of hidden. And it is, let's see if I can get a shot of this. Well, yeah, it's kind of hard to, uh, I won't be able to show you the actual bolt, but I can tell you where it is. So if you're going to pull a 2.5 out, and you got all the bolts, you think you got all the bolts out, and it won't come out. There's a hidden bolt, and it's right down behind the motor mount. Or, this is the transmission mount, actually. So, where my hand is, there's a bolt right inside here. So if you take your finger and run it down here, there's a bolt. And you can see down here on the engine bell housing, whatever you call that, right there, that's where that bolt threads in, right there. So that's just a little little tech tip. There's a hidden bolt in there. All the other ones you can see except for that one. All right, more later. All right, so let's steady the camera here. So the very top bolt, my hand is covering it can't really show up. Anyway, it's the very top bolt you see up there. Right there. And then this one here. So it's just those two. Okay. These other bolts hold the... Don't worry about those two. Leave those on. Okay, there's another bolt. Let's see if I can show it. This is the one that's hard to get to. It, um, it goes to the engine block. On the side, side, there it is. Yeah, you can see it right in the middle. Got that green colored bracket right there. So that goes into the firewall side of the um, bracket. You also notice that I got the, you got to have the pulley off in order to get to that top bolt. To get that out, you got to have the pulley off. Okay, so you got to take that off. And then the only other bolt is right there. Got a little short one on the bottom of the engine, um, right below your crankshaft. And then, uh, let me put this light up here somewhere. Hold on. And then there's going to be an, an idler pulley here. And of course, I got to put the water, um, power steering pulley back on. So that's how it works. No problem. Okay, um, I'm putting the starter back in the 626, and I can't even show you the bolt holes, but there's a couple on the right side, you know, down below there that you can't even see. But what I'm finding, the way to get those bolts in is um, you have to stick your arm in right down here by the brake booster. So you got to shove it right down here. So to get more room, you could take this bracket off, but um, you know there's not a lot of room. But basically, if you shove your arm right in there. I'm not going to put it in all the way, but my arm just barely fits. But it will go down in there, and you'll be able to get your hand right down in and get those two bottom bolts on the right hand 
of the starter and should be able to get a wrench and everything in there. Um, 14 millimeter socket. So yeah, it's really hard to get those in, but like I say, if you if you go down in that little pocket right there and get the light on it. Anyway. Yeah, right down under the brake booster. Okay. Okay, so yesterday fired up the uh, 626. I had two problems. The minor problem is the power steering pump again leaking a lot of fluid. I think I got air in the system and it blew out the um, copper washers. I shouldn't be too hard to fix, but. Uh, yeah, the engine's running horrible. And it was acting like the timing was off, so I was thinking, uh-oh, maybe I didn't get the cam timing right. And so, you know, we checked it, and it looked pretty good to put the compression gauge on, and everything was looking pretty close. But I noticed that the, uh, the crank pulley was wobbling. I thought, uh-oh. And I'm thinking, if the if the pulley is wobbling you know you got teeth on the back that might not be reading and that's why it, the engine was going rrr, rrr, it couldn't idle so I pulled the bolt out that was in there really super tight but look what I see here there's the keyway in the pulley and there's the keyway in the crank so apparently Either I don't have the key in there, or we sheared the key, or something. But this is about probably 60 degrees off on the pulley to the crank, and then, uh, like I say, it was wobbling on there. So I don't know what's going on at this point. We'll have to fix it, I guess. All right, working on the 626. So I got the broken key out the timing um, pulley was really hard to get off normally these just go on by hand you don't need a puller or anything there's no these aren't threaded for a puller but because that key was really messed up anyway I had to pry it off there so I put the put this on without the key and it fits pretty good but the uh, crank pulley it's got a lot of slop in it, and I think I'm gonna go online and and just see if I can buy a brand new one. I don't know if I can, but you know, it it really it wobbles and it seems to wobble more in the axis of the key. So I put it on with you know no key there, of course, but it wobbled more this way than it does this way. But either way, both both ways, it kind of it's not good and I do not want this to happen again so I really don't know what's going on here you got to realize that this motor had crankshaft bearing issues so in time maybe that damaged this out on the end I don't know but uh, yeah so that's where I'm at I'm gonna try to go buy a brand new pulley and a new key and put it back together Okay, a couple of little pointers. When I had to replace the key on the crankshaft, I had to, of course, remove this timing pulley. And, you know, of course, now the engine was in the car. And I had a heck of a time getting the belt back on. So what I did was I, I loosened up this pulley here and... I think this pulley and I loosened up this arm now the book says to take that off I didn't want to take that off and so what I did was I couldn't get the belt on 
and this belt's in pretty good shape. So I took, I loosened this bolt and I took this bolt out. And when you do that, you see there's a little casting here. And it goes up and hits on the bottom of this cylinder. So if you take this bolt out, you can move this over and it'll kind of drop that arm a little bit more. And it'll allow just enough tension to where I was able to get that on. Okay, so that's the first thing. And uh, the second thing is uh, lining up your timing marks. Okay, when I initially put the belt on, this is before you know I had the engine in the car. But then when the when I had to replace the balancer, I had to put a new keyway in here, so I had to take this back apart again. So I actually found the method in the book worked really well. So your belt will be off, and I'm just going to read what it says. It says to install temporarily install the crankshaft pulley bolt and rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise until the tooth to the right of the crankshaft sprocket is aligned with the timing mark on the engine. So hopefully that made sense, but you're going to turn this counterclockwise. So right now it's timed. You take, you know, the belt will be off. You're going to put this tooth right on that pointer. Okay? And then once you put your belt on, Put your timing belt on and then you're going to turn this you know turn it clockwise to where you're back on time and those cams up there will not move they shouldn't move it, it actually works um, just you just got to trust me it actually works you know there's there's some slop in there and it uh, it works perfectly so that's a great method and that's how you're supposed to do it I guess Yep. Okay. Yeah, one last note on the timing. Once you have all three of your timing marks lined up, it says to turn the crank 720 degrees, which is, uh, I believe, uh, two complete rev revolutions, you know, 360. Um, and then when you get done, it, you know, all three timing marks, obviously, you want them back on and if you're good then you're good to go so you know that worked pretty well for me just did a cold start idling pretty well so far so good Kind of checking for some belt squeaks and things. Everything sounds pretty good. Got the headlights going and everything, so alternator's not squealing. All right, thanks for watching.